natural medium. I'm a huge podcast listener myself. I listen to tons of podcasts every single week. And there's just such an intimacy of being in somebody's head. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed in my business is that when um, all this, when I would start getting um, sales conversations with people from the podcast, those people talk to me like they've known me for ever like I am their best friend because I have been in their head so it was just this very natural medium for me to explore and I'm so glad I did I love podcasting oh that's great when did you when did you start it and how how I guess long have you been going on Ooh, that's a great question so it started Mm, several, like three or four years ago, but I had a very long hiatus. So (laughs) I started it. It was called the Rebel Speaker Podcast at the time. And it was focused, surprise, surprise, on speaking, of course. Mm -hmm. And then I was, I did about six months of episodes. And then I was just going to take the summer off, like end season one, take summer off, come back in the fall. Well, fall became the next year. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so six months went by and I restarted it up and then I've been consistent ever since. So I think I'm at about 155 episodes right now and I do a mixture of like solo shows and interview shows. Oh, sure. Well, congratulations. That's, that's definitely you. a feat. So talk to me about how you approach fear. Uh, because obviously that's something that comes up as a speaker, writer, you know, you thought leader putting yourself out there. How do you think about fear, approach fear? How do you teach people to get over it? How do you get over it in your own life? Yes, it's such a great question. And what was funny when I had this idea for the three word rebellion, and it was one of those ideas that scared the crap out of me because it felt so big because I saw the power of it. I knew that it could be a big thing, like something much bigger than I was currently creating in my business. And when I first had like the download for it, I was exhausted and scared. And I remember being in the bathroom at a restaurant thinking like, why is this idea choosing me? Why do I have to do this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can. And it took me like, it took me at least a week to even tell my husband about this idea because I felt like, that I wasn't up for the challenge of it because this message is so much bigger than me. And I was just like, I don't know if I'm up for this. Like, this is scary. And what are people going to think? And oh my gosh, I'm pivoting my business. Like, this is all insane. And for me, getting past the fear, it's, it's not about like, I have to stop my mind from thinking about all the things that can go wrong. That's a very natural place for me to go. Like I'm going to pivot my business and people are going to think the three word rebellion is stupid when I put it out there and everybody's going to laugh at me and like, and, and, and I'm going to live in a van down by the river and, 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 (laughs) (laughs) and so it was all about just taking little baby steps and reminding myself that that's what I'm doing. Like, so at first, you know, I just told, my husband and a few of my really good friends about it and just kind of got their feedback and heard what they thought. And they're like, oh, this is so great. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to do another little baby step and I'm just going to do a webinar for my existing community to see what they think about it. So it was just, it's kind of like exposure therapy, a very Mm -hmm. small steps and letting myself in some ways, feel that fear and not push it away. And realizing that this is part of the process helps me move through it. And also support, like I have great coaches, a great husband, good friends, like all of that. So it's a little bit of the exposure therapy, the taking like the small little risks and seeing how they are panning out, controlling the self-talk. And it's like, I'm not burning my whole business to the ground. I'm just changing. I'm trying this one thing and we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't, I can go back. (laughs) <laughs> and, just, you know, because I think we were, we just think like worst case scenario. So really just like taking these small actions and then getting the support I need along the way. Yeah. So you've you've mentioned coaches along your along your way mm-hmm. um, as you've started and then grown your business. How has that process been like? Are there were there books that you were reading or different types of coaches that you 
um, reached out to you to help you at different stages or what was that process like? Yeah, that's a great question. So when I first started my business, I really, I mean, I knew some about business because I worked out in the corporate world, but I really didn't know all that much about business. And so one of the most helpful things I did at the beginning of my business, I took um, Tara McMullen, or she was formerly Tara Gentile. Um, I took her 10,000 feet course, which was like really like this business incubator. It kind of gave you, it was like three months long and it gave you pretty much all the information you needed on how to like create your business from business models to marketing and messaging and all of that. And so that was brilliant for me. And, you know, I would, you know, add some tools to my toolkit as I go along, take different courses. But at some, like, I think it was around 2016, no, 2017, I realized you get to a point where business isn't that hard. Like, you know what you need to do, and yet you're still not doing it. And you realize that the big thing that the big thing that was getting in my way was me. It wasn't the lack of knowledge. It was what was going on in my head. So what I did is I didn't do any business coaching. I ended up working with a woman named Tanya Geisler, who specializes in imposter complex and helping you move past your imposter complex. Mm-hmm. And that coaching was so transformational for me because at first I was like, oh, I don't suffer from the imposter complex. And yes, yes, I do. And one of the big <laughs> things that showed up for me was that I had this tendency If somebody gave me a compliment about the work that I do or how I help them or the results that they got from working with me, I would just let that bounce right off of me. It was just like it was like I was like Teflon. It's like Mm -hmm. you'd give me a compliment. It bounced off off of me. And Tanya really pointed out that I wasn't showing respect or reverence for my own work. Mm. And that was big. I was like. Oh, I was completely unable to see like how I was contributing to the success of my clients or how what I did, you know, what I do in messaging is so transformative for people because messaging is hard for them where it's not hard for me. Mm-hmm. And I finally was like, oh, I need to let those compliments land so that I can go forward and lead with my message and help people and get the word about the three word rebellion out into the world. So doing that personal development work, like the year before the book came out was a game changer for how I was showing up in the world. Sure. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what do you see in the future of your you your business and your brand. Are you going to be doing another book perhaps? Are you going to keep, you know, pushing forward with what you're doing right now or have you planned that far ahead? So right now there is no plan for a future book. Well, I'm okay. I do have an inkling for a book in the future and okay. I know what it's about, but I'm not going to tell anyone yet. Okay. <laughs> but there is something that's percolating. But right now my focus is on the three word rebellion. So Current, like, this is my, my vision going forward. And my vision is to take this, um, to do a group program around the book. But more importantly, I want to create a, like, basically a licensing for this so that other people who do messaging work can use the three word rebellion. They're trained in the methodology and they're able to use it so that, you know, it's not just, you know, like, I'm the only one who can, you can you can work with no i want right. to train m- many people to be able to use this to help other people find their message because if you don't find your message in your business it's going to always hold you back and without a good solid process it's really hard to find so i want to do that and the eventual goal of this for me is to sell the business one day and retire. And that's like 20 years from now, not anytime <laughs> soon. But it's just about growing the three word rebellion, helping more people find their three word rebellion so that they can make the impact they want to make. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah. 
with everything that you've done and experienced, what would you say has been the best advice that you have ever received? Mm, that is such a difficult question to answer. And I would say the best advice I've ever received is about just following the little nudges that life gives you along the way. Mm -hmm. Because what I've noticed is when I follow the breadcrumbs, and I think about this even when I was in college and I wasn't ever planning to get a PhD, one of the professors in the department who I never had a class with approached me one night and she's like, hey, have you thought about graduate school? And I was like, hey, are you nuts? You you don't even know if I'm smart. <laughs> like, I've never had a class with you. But because I was open and I said, yes, that led me to getting the PhD. And it, I see the same breadcrumbs in my life is that we have to tune in and follow those little nudges. Like even with the three word rebellion, I knew that there was something trying to come through. Like I had this message that wanted out. Like I was mm -hmm. going to birth something. I had no idea what it was, but I was like, all right, it's going to show up when it's going to show up. And I'm open to it. And I think that is, that's always key is just following that little bit of knowing that we have to see what happens next. Yeah. Michelle, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate your, your time on this one. If listeners would like to listen to your podcast, read your book, uh, perhaps work with you, where is the best place they can go for all of this? Yes. So if you'd like to read the book, it's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Book Depository. Just put three word rebellion in the search bar and it comes right up. And then for everything else, I'm over at drmichellemazur.com. You can find the podcast at drmichellemazur.com slash podcast. And also I'm very active on Instagram. So if you want to have a conversation with me, that would be awesome. I'm at Dr. Michelle Mazur on there as well. Perfect. I will put those in the show notes so they can click right through. Awesome. Thank you so much, Yuri. Of course. Thank you. This was my pleasure. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Advance Your Hour podcast. If you like this episode, please go into iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that every single time I release a new episode, it will go directly to you without even thinking about it. If you're interested in hearing older episodes, please go to AdvanceYourArt.com where you can find the catalog of everything I've done so far, as well as contact information and projects I'm working on. Thank you again, and have a great day.